So I spoke to Yaron Brook about objectivism and Ayn Rand. He, uh, he kind of argued, he highlighted the difference between capitalism and anarchism as uh, around the topic of violence and the, that having government be the sort of, the, the, the negative way to say it is like having a monopoly on violence, but basically being the arbiter of, or the, the people that making sure that violence doesn't get out of hand that would, yeah, you know. 2020 showed that, yep. The government's great at that, yep. Well, what, what's, <laughs> okay, w without. <laughs> this is him with the straight face making that argument. Good yeah. work, you're on. <laughs> All right, well, can you with a straight face argue uh, for the idea that in anarchism, violence would not get out of hand? Sure, for one thing, uh, if your worst argument against, an uh, my, one of my little quotes is, what are presented as the strongest arguments against anarchism are inevitably descriptions of the status quo. So the argument is under anarchism, you know, you'd have warlords, <laughs> you know, killing people. And then you'd have, uh, you know, whoever's strongest gets to just take over a neighborhood. Well, we have that now. Uh, we saw that the police um, are perfectly comfortable disarming the population. And then when they try to protect themselves are punished, they're we're happy to stand down. You can't. You can only have that happen if you have a monopoly. If they're like, let's suppose you had uh, television stations, right? And CBS said, you know what? We're not going to broadcast. Cool. You don't broadcast. We're going to watch any of these other channels. So the problem with having a monopoly is everyone has to be dependent on this issue. What's amazing about minarchism, which objectivists are, is they will argue that government is really, really bad at everything it does and it touches. Therefore, it has to be in charge of the most important stuff. Well, that's not therefore, but, but there is a thing that's fundamentally different than all the other things. But Yaron Brook also said that no government has, e this is on your show, mm -hmm. has ever worked in the way he's proposing. Now, objectivism, Ayn Rand's philosophy, is based on objective reality. And what she posited is, you look and study the facts of nature, facts of reality, and deduce things accordingly. And she very much regards herself as part of the Aristotelian tradition, as opposed to the Pla uh, Platonist tradition, where the idea precedes reality and the idea is more real than what we see around us. So what he's saying is, all the data, according to him, contradicts his argument, mm -hmm. but still, He's going to make this imaginary government that has never existed, and there's no evidence that it can exist. Um, let's talk about objective law. To have access to the legal system, which is something we want, even just in terms of selling disputes, when you have a government monopoly, it's going to be more expensive, more difficult for poor people. The cost of hiring a lawyer is more expensive than hiring a surgeon. You can't say with a straight face, this is the only way or the best way. Okay, so... And the other thing is the argument for objectivism, they, they have this stupid, against anarchism, they have this stupid claim, it's like, what if, you know, you're a member of one security company and I'm a member of another and we have a dispute and one shows up the door, what happens now? As if this is some insuperable argument. Well, we have that on earth. Every country is in a state of anarchism regarding every other country. We don't have a world government. So what happens if a Canadian kills an American in Mexico. I have no idea. I bet you don't have an idea. What I'm sure of is that system has been worked out ahead of time between the three countries, and it's been worked out in such a way that you and I don't have to reinvent the wheel. Same thing with cell phone companies. If I'm on Sprint, you're on Metro PCS, and I call you, who pays? Does Sprint pay you? Do they split the difference? First of all, there's no objective way that one has to work. But the thing is, companies who have... Car, uh, auto accidents. They have arbitrage all the time. Like if I run into you, they work it out and it never reaches our um, uh, um, our desk. So the only thing that cops are good at is keeping people, at any government monopoly, is forcing people to be their customers by keeping them unsafe. Okay. There's a few things uh, I'd like to say there that just, just explore some of these ideas. So one is in terms of Canadian and Mexico and so on, that it does... Something has been worked out, perhaps. Not perhaps. Don't don't say perhaps. You know for sure 
that if some, well, there's a point I'm trying to make. So okay. yeah, let, let's say for sure it's been worked out. There is a there was a point in history where it wasn't worked out. Like to 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 work to come to a place of stability, there has to first be some instability. So you, when you first like for every kind of situation, it, they're like dispute over space, like who gets to own Mars, that kind of thing. Sure. There's a first for it. And then, then these different competing institutions will have to figure it out. Uh -huh. And so there's the concern with anarchism, I think, or with any kind of interaction, what well, you said the, brilliantly that there's an anarchism relative to the, there's no one world government. Right. Uh, Alex Jones enters the chat, but, uh, <laughs> the there's an insta the, the the fear is that there's going to be an instability that's that that doesn't converge towards some stable place. That is not the fear. That is the goal under Ayn Rand's philosophy. Markets have something what they always talk about as being creatively destructive, yeah. which means you look at something that's been happening for a very long time. Every generation, every innovator starts chipping away at it. He finds better ways, marginal improvement or marginal and or it doesn't work and he goes broke. When government tries to implement improvement, we all have to suffer the consequences. When an innovator does, it's a huge asymmetry. If it hurts, it only hurts him. If it succeeds, he becomes rich and we all profit as a consequence. Well, but the fear of anarchism, I think, is that it will be non-creative destruction. It'll be just destruction, right? It's, it's, it's not like the instability. Uh, uh, let's give you, th there's no, stability is one of these words that sounds objective, but has no real meaning. What field has stability? If you had, a, let's suppose you want stability. Relationships. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about medicine. Stability means we're not going to invent new diseases or new treatments, right? If you mean stability in terms of a baseline of security, we have that already. Very few relationships turn violent. Under an anarchist system, look at it right now. We're, if you look at a bar full of drunken young males full of testosterone, if you look at a hotel where everyone is not native to the area, those are both far safer than the places that the government has taken upon itself to protect you. The parks, the alleyways, the streets, the subways. We have right now a comparison of which is better at keeping people safe. And it's very obvious that when it's something is private and under someone's control, and there would be layers of, there'd be more police, but they wouldn't be a government monopoly. The store would have someone, the street would have someone, and you'd have your own personal security that would be attached to your phone. Having security as a function of geography, as opposed to a function of you as an individual, is a landline technology in a post cell phone world. So you think it's possible to have, psychologically speaking, as an individual, among the masses to have a sense of security, even there's even though there's not a centralized thing at the bottom of the whole thing. So like, there's not a set of laws that are enforced based on geography, like we have nations now. You can have a set of laws that are enforced in some kind of emergent agreed upon way. So like, basically I wanna go to a hotel and yep. trust that I'll be able to get a room and nobody's gonna break down the door and, uh, I don't know, but you have take that, all my vodka. Let, let's, let's take a different way. If you were worried about a hotel having bed bugs, that's not a, something that government's involved in. What mechanism, and that's not an unrealistic concern. Are there mechanisms right now that you can undertake to make sure that's not the case? Yes. So it would be the same thing with, I want to make sure I go to a hotel that has security. It would be exactly the same thing. And here's another example, kosher food. Uh, people who keep kosher, Jews who keep kosher, their food has to be prepared in a certain way. It has to meet higher rabbinical standards, right? If you look at food, it will have that certification, the K, there's, and there's even competition there. There's the K and there's the stricter U letter. People don't notice it because they're not looking for it. Right. You would have companies certifying different locales for their level of security, and it would take an hour to have an app that would, just like when you have toll roads, right? That would tell you you're approaching an unsafe area, you're not gonna be covered by us or, and you could have it color coded very easily. We could do this today. But the thing is, you're exactly correct, but there's an assumption of you're already in a, okay, you can give me a different word than stability, but you're already in a place where the forces of the market or whatever can operate. Right. The worry is like initially 
you might not have enough stability to where you can choose one place over the other versus, uh, based on the security that they provide. We already have different types of security here because we have federal government, we have state governments, and we have local uh, governments. Yes. So, and, and these often contradict each other. So the idea of the implausibility of having different security co companies and having it be unstable or impossible, we already have a very rough example of it happening in real life. But all of it started, this is what this, like, the idea of, especially with Yaron, is like, it all started with government monopoly of violence saying like, now kids, don't let violence get out of hand. So like, we had a we, civil war where half the country was slaughtered. That's a display of the government not having a monopoly on the violence, right? It's like, it's, that's it had a split. A it had such a monopoly on the violence in the North that it could draft people to fight others that they didn't even care about. No, but there's about. a South, so it's like, it's a, it's a, it's the government splitting. Okay. It's like, that's a giant iceberg, like splitting, it's, it's, the, the argument is that you would have something like a civil war much more often under anarchism. But that's, that's, that's first of all, if you had a civil war mu much more often, it, we don't have that with car companies, right? There's no car company that says, I refuse to pay or whatever. Uh, if that's you, not violence, sorry to interrupt, but like, uh, and I'm playing- It is, hold on, let me here, finish. It yeah, is yeah. violence because if I'm a company and I'm saying that my cars can, run over yours with no consequences. This is a rough analog. That's Why has that not happened? Now, in, in, in terms of having security system, if I am free, just like switching cell phone to go from one provider to another, and this one company as part of its payment doesn't want $50 a month, $100 a month, wants my son, I'm not going to be a member of this security company unless in that case, we're dealing with something like a Pearl Harbor or foreign invasion where it's like all hands on deck. Let's go by evidence. How many places do we have evidence of that there you can have at a large scale? Well, it's has to be on a large scale. Because it feels like once you don't know the person. What about eBay? eBay is an example of anarchism in practice. I am selling something to someone whose name I don't even know in a country that is nowhere proximate to me, and eBay acts as the arbiter. Sometimes I don't get the money after I get screwed over, but that's far less than the taxation that I have to give to the federal government. That's a, that's a great point but it's in the space of finance. If I could, if on eBay, you could also commit violence. Theft is violence. No. If Yeah, if you give me 10 grand for a car and I don't deliver anything, you've stolen 10 grand from me. Yes, but it's there's something uniquely problematic to being stabbed <laughs> or, or shot. The reason you're the stabbed or shot is because the government despite its contract, is refusing to allow Second Amendment rights to be implemented among the citizenry. And the people who are making that the case are the cops. They are the ones who are the traitors to the Constitution and should be regarded as such. Whereas private companies are far more amenable to market pressures than the state is. I mean, it's, a, it's a strong argument, but uh, well, let, let's actually just briefly mention the scale thing. Why Why don't you think we should talk about scale? Like Because if you had anarchism just in Vermont or just in Brooklyn, well, who, fine. The people make the argument you need anarchism or else China's gonna invade. But that's like saying what, like, does, like do these little countries don't exist? Does San Salvador not exist? Some of them are violent, some of them are not. But the point is they're not all at a moment's notice about to be invaded. Kuwait's an example of this. Kuwait was invaded by Iraq and very quickly all the big countries who are interested in having your stability, safe space, got involved and, and kicked him out of Kuwait. If you had this company that was waging war on the population, it seems quite likely that the other organization would get together and put a stop to this because they're not in a position to provide the service of security to their customers. Okay, all this is brilliant. But didn't you just say that we are actually in a state of anarchism relative to other countries? Yes. So. Isn't this what emerges? This is this what aren't we actually living in a state of anarchism, where we all have agreed? I haven't agreed to anything. So, like the basic criticism you have is like you're born on a land, geographical land, ge area, geographical area, and you're forced to have signed a bunch of stuff just by being born Correct. in a particular place. So, so really, 
you could, if you could just much easier choose right which space of ideas you are uh, associated with, right? That would be actually a state of anarchism. Yes. And you could have like a military that you sign up with. Sure. And you're certainly not putting people in prison to get raped because they're selling drugs. Yeah. Uh, and you're certainly not allowing everyone else on the street who wants to be there. Can we say something nice about Ayn Rand? I can talk what? about nice things about her all day. I own no. her copy of The Fountainhead, you know. Yeah.